everybody, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. Today's tutorial is the seven tips for photographing from a photo blind. I was recently in Southeast Arizona at the ponds at Elephant Head. And one of the things that you want to make sure that you can do when you're sitting in a blind is choose your angles. Make sure that you can shoot all the way from the left with these perches back in here, all the way to the right. And make sure that you can shoot up and down, that you've got a good view from where you're sitting in the blind from all aspects of it. Tip number two on shooting out of a photo blind is making sure that the perches don't have any elements that overlap. So this perch here, it's got a little feeder in there, but none of the arms are sticking out and interfering with this perch right here. Actually, there's a bird right there. And you can see that these perches, they're pretty distant, far apart from each other, so they don't overlap. And so there's no conflict from shooting angles as four or five people are spread out across the pond. Here's another blind setup, and you can see that there's some perches back in here, and none of these have elements that cross over each other. This is for woodpeckers, some flowers in here for hummingbirds, and some more hummingbird flowers in here. And then we've got a water drip here with some rocks and grass and flowers, and then some oriole feeders in here and none of the perches overlap so you can make sure that you get a great shot that way. This is just an example of a perch where it's there's no overlapping elements. It's a clean shot. You've got a great view of the bird. So tip number three is have extra equipment with you. I recommend you take plenty of storage cards with you. I shoot CF cards, so I have at least four of those. When a card is full, I just flip it over and put the backside up, and then I always label my cards with my name on it so that if I loan somebody a card, I can get it back. And then make sure that you have extra camera batteries. I also make sure I have a 1.4 extender and a 25 millimeter extension tube. I'll show you a couple examples here. So this is a Rufus Crown Sparrow at 600 millimeters. Here's the Rufus Crown Sparrows at 600 millimeters with the 1.4 extender. So it's a tighter shot. It's a little bit better. And I can crop this. This is full frame. I can crop this um, to make it a little bit better. And then you want the extension tube because my big 600 millimeter lens has an 11 or 12 uh, foot minimum focal distance. And sometimes when you're at these photo blinds, the birds get closer. And so a 25 millimeter extension tube, you can put that between your camera and your lens and then you'll be able to focus closer. So this little chipping sparrow was probably eight or nine feet away and I was able to get this picture because I could put the 25 millimeter extension tube on. So tip number four is before you go to a photo blind, find out what birds are in the area. Study the birds a little bit, get a birding app or get several like I have on my phone. A lot of these birding apps will show you the identification, they'll show you the range. You can use some of the songs to call birds in if it's legal in the area that you're at. And here tip number five is quite often these photo blinds are kind of dusty and so it's good to have a blower so you can blow dust off the front of the lens elements, a micro cleaning cloth and maybe even a wet cleaning cloth solution just so that you can keep your optics really clean and everything is sharp and crisp. Tip number six is if the birds are nervous and you they're flying away and you're not getting good shots put your camera on silent mode and I use silent continuous right here you can tell my Canon cameras that's what that looks like silent continuous mode so I might only get four or five frames a second down from seven to ten but I get the shot because the birds aren't nervous they're not scared away they come back sooner all of those kinds of things help this Lucy's warbler was very shy but with being quiet we were able to um, allow it to come in and drink some water it would kind of sulk in. Same thing with this warbling vireo. It would stay up in the bushes and watch for quite a bit and then it would kind of jump down, get some water, and then jump back down in the bushes. These are good examples of times when silent mode would really work well so that the birds don't get any more nervous than they already are. And tip number seven is that birds clue in on motion and sound quite often. So you want to be quiet in these photo blinds. You, you want to keep your voices down. You also want to keep your movements down. But you can also see that my camera is sticking out pretty far in front of the blind. So birds are going to see that lens moving back and forth. It's much better if the front element of the lens is equal to the front of the blind and then the birds won't notice stuff sticking out of the blind moving as much. If the movement happens inside the blind where it's darker, the birds aren't going to notice as much. Today's sponsor is the book Learn the Art of Bird Photography. It's been out for about six weeks now. Uh, you can pick up a copy on Amazon. It's available as a paperback or as a Kindle book there. 
You can also buy it on my website at timboyerphotography.com and if you buy it there, I can sign it for you. Uh, please support the channel by buying a book. It's the only revenue that I make off of doing these YouTube videos right now. So buy a book, learn a little bit more. And my favorite roadrunner from Southeast Arizona, Roadie, says subscribe, like, and share if you enjoy what we're doing on this channel. Remember, I post a tutorial every Wednesday, so good shooting, and I will see you next week. Bye.